The poor and middle class get this advice all the time. If you want more money, save more. And work harder. Right? And you already yeah. work harder and save more. Take more risk. Today, the real subject is, do you want to be poor, middle class, and rich? And who do you listen to? Garrett Gunderson, he's the author of Killing Sacred Cows. And today, the real subject is, do you want to be poor, middle class, and rich? And who do you listen to? So my point is, we're repeating, because re repetition is how we learn, is there was this great book, The Millionaire Next Door. And it worked because the stock market was going up. This is Stanley. Like I said, my father bought a house, I think in 1967, it was $50,000, million two, million four, a few years later. The trouble is he couldn't sell it because he had no place to go. So he was a net worth No million. cash flow coming in. No cash flow, and he lost his job, and he was all this But his stuff. taxes were going up. Yeah, his, ta his property that. taxes yeah. went up. So there's a lot of people who are millionaires, but they're broke. If you can understand that, isn't that true? Yeah. Net worth is relatively worthless if you can't, can't convert to cash flow. That's right. That's the bottom line. So there's millions of baby boomers right now my age who are in trouble, right? Yep. They're in serious trouble. And the reason they're serious, I won't go into too much detail, but between 2008 and 2015 today, what the federal government did, the U.S. Treasury, is they borrowed out the money from the pension plans of government employees. So the pension plans are empty, as is Social, Social Security. Security is empty. Yeah. yeah, Social Security is empty. So all of you right now who are my age, let's say you're 50 plus, and you're going, well, I'm going to have a happy retirement. The real truth is, the odds are, it's not that you'll die poor, the odds are you'll run out of money before you die. I'm going to say this, what's going to happen, let's say you're like, say, real old, 67 or 68, and you're out of money and out of a job? I mean, is that possible? Oh, it's absolutely possible. One of the worst articles I ever read was the vice president of retirement services for Mass Mutual, a multi-billion dollar company, decided to retire in 1999. He took all of his money, but 100,000, and put it in aggressive mutual funds. The 100,000 was to buy a small fishing business. <laughs> the fishing business failed, and the market confiscated most of his wealth in 2000, 2001, and 2002, and his job was advising other people on retirement. The article showed him staying in front of a limo. He'd become a limo driver for his retirement because everything got wiped out. And these are the people that are supposed to be giving advice to people on living right. a better retirement. So once again, Garrett's book here, it's Killing Sacred Cows. So what are some of the sacred cows rattling around in the heads of people today as they watch this video? So one of the first ones is they believe in the finite pie. So it's kind of that scarcity thinking is one of the sacred cows where people are in this consumer condition where they look to take more from the world than they give. They don't think about how they could produce to create more value. They don't think about how they could increase their impact and get more money. They think that you know, it's going to be taken care of by someone else. And it's kind of this fear, doubt and worry kind of mindset. They think it's all on what they have to lose, not on what they can contribute. And that's the very first myth that I address in the book. Okay. So this is the point here. Most of you, if you're baby boomers, you're gonna run out of money before you die. That's the worst. What happens when people run out of money when they're, before they're dead? <laughs> well, uh, they, I guess they go and uh, become a burden on their family and start getting money from them. But did, did I you think, see that as a financial planner? Oh, you, you definitely see that, um, especially because what I'm helping plan with individuals their number one risk was, I'd ask them what their family was like, like their parents. And there's this reverse parenting that starts to happen where they're now paying for their parents' right. lifestyle because their retirements and their pensions and everything that was promised didn't turn out what it was supposed to be. So everybody's watching Janet Yellen today and they're watching Christine Lagarde of the IMF and the World Bank and all this stuff. And everybody's telling you, hold on. Meanwhile, what's happening just as we're, just as we're talking, Caterpillar, which is a very, very blue chip company, you know, you think, well, I have a job with Caterpillar. I'm safe. So Caterpillar in 2015 announced they're going to lay off 5,000 people, and in 2016, another 10,000 to 15,000. So what does that say for job security if a company like Caterpillar, which is kind of a blue chip, not it's not really a blue right. chip, but it's a solid company. These employees, what do they do now? Here we are at 2015. They're going to invest for the long term? Right, and then just think about this. There's people right now in garages coming up with the ideas 
that within the next 10 years are going to replace companies in the Fortune 500. We've never seen that kind of speed no. before. So if you're and they're not buying American, and holding, they're all over the world. Right, if you're buying and holding and hoping that's going to go up, the rules have changed. Those old rules of the millionaire next door and buy and hold and pray, they are antiquated and right. they're going to harm people because those companies, see one of the other things that's kind of a myth or a lie that's out there. Oh, wait, wait, it's, it's a sacred a cow. A sacred cow. Gotta plug your book. A sacred here, cow, of course. <laughs> so this, one of the sacred cows is when we talk about averages in the market, one of the things that the little tricks they do is let's say I have a, a S&P 500 index fund and let's say Woolworth goes out of business. Remember when they went out of business? They don't run that as a zero for the rest of the time, but if my money was in there at that time, that's always a zero for me. They just plug in a new company and say, here's the new S&P 500, and it exaggerates the returns from what the actual individual investor gets. So that's just one example. There's a hundred of those examples. Yeah. And I cover this in this book here, Second Chance. In here, there's not there's, there's a big book, but there's a lot of pictures in it. You know, So if you guys want to see pictures and all this, there's a lot of pictures you can look at it, and you can interpret the what's happening you know, for yourself here. Yeah. Then you can make up your own mind. So you can know the truth so that you have yeah. the right insight. And it's not my charts, it's government charts. Right, so you, I mean, it's it's out there. It's just that yeah. you've found the data and, and give it in a way that people are actually interested to hear about it. And then I think where we just make a, a good uh, you know, team doing this together is, you've got people focused on cash flow, and if someone's willing to be a business owner, I hope them keep so much more of that cash flow because they'll pay less in tax, they'll pay less in interest, they'll have more access to money. They won't be losing money to the institutions and all these kind of fees, and it's, it improves their life today, not 30 years from now. They can become economically independent, as you would say, get out of the rat race in a few years if they're committed to it. We've seen it happen. Yeah, but this is a, a we're going to talk about that. See, most people can't do it. Right, because they're in the they're no, taking advice on the poor side. They're, they're in the cows. sacred cow. They have to kill the they're, sacred They're cow. hearing from the middle class, they giving them middle class advice. Father, you know I, mean? <laughs> well, I think this is the chart here, and then uh, Darren will put them up there. But this is quantitative easing. They're printing money, and people are saying save money. Duh. You know? right. And, and then, then this here is the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar. When you print money, the purchasing power goes down, and people still say save money and work hard. Duh. How stupid are you? But well, if you want to be poor, don't pay attention to this. Well, because the poor and middle class get this advice all the time. If you want more money, save more. And work harder. Right, and you already talk, yeah. work harder and save more. Take more risk, but it's risk on things that they know nothing about. No, See, they, what, they, they should say live below your means. Yeah, live below your means. I hate Cut living back. below my means. Right. I mean, I think living within your means, when most people hear that, they hear cutting back. I hear two other things. Expand your means. Right? Well, I do. Expand your means. Or be more efficient with every dollar you have that you're not giving the government more than they deserve. And pay less tax. Yeah, pay less tax, exactly. So so you can live within your means and, and still drive two Ferraris, have a Bentley, live the life you want. It's just simply you invest in yourself. You grow your knowledge. You're a good real estate investor because you've invested the time. You've built the team. Those who are following the old rules or the old sacred cows, you're going to get hammered. So this is how we make changes, okay? And this is the whole message of today's program with Garrett. There's advice for poor people, there's middle class people, and rich people. If you like being poor, then Susie Orman is your best teacher. You know, what she says is cut up your credit yep. cards and live below your means. You know, for most people, that's good advice, right? Yeah. It's fantastic advice. You won't if get If you're rich. spending more than you make, you yeah. got to listen to that. And it's not, well, at the point that, you know, Garrett's making here, it's not how much you make makes you poor. What makes you poor is you spend more than you make. Right. So, you know, I have a friend who says, you know, he makes a lot of money as an attorney. He says, my, my wife has a black belt in spending. You know, she shops all day long. So he might, let's say he makes a dollar, she'll spend 10. So when Susie Orman says, cut up your credit cards, Fantastic advice. Right. Because if you don't stop that, you'll never be rich anyway, right? Totally agree with that. That's the problem. So Susie, I, mean, I love it when she had her show. I mean, this one woman called up. She says, oh, Susie, you know, I'm making $1,000 a month. 900 is going to rent, and I want to buy a puppy. And she goes, <laughs> well, how much is that puppy going to cost? Oh, $3,000. You know, how much is it going to cost? Denied. Yeah. <laughs> how much is it going to cost to feed it? Oh, 100 bucks a month? She goes, how are you going to pay for it?
How you can go feed yourself. <laughs> yeah, how you can feed yourself. She goes, denied. I love it. Susie, keep doing that. You know what I mean? Because that person, if they don't change that, if they don't stop spending more Nothing than they make. Nothing else will save them. Yeah, because they'll, no. you know, so they, they get the higher paying job, they just spend more money. Yeah, it's Parkinson's law. The more they make, the more they spend. Yeah. And so that's why Susie Orman's fantastic advice for poor people. And then for the middle class, we have a whole bunch of people, okay? We have number one millionaire next door with yeah. Stanley. Yeah. And also we have Dave Ramsey. He is a friend of mine. He has fantastic advice. You want to be middle class? Live debt free. And people go, oh, that's such a good idea. You know, debt free. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So you buy a house, <coughs> you pay it off, you buy a house, you know, all this stuff. I did that. When I had, when I was becoming rich, Kim and I, lived in a little house, was at the Hilton Hotel in Phoenix here. But my monthly payments total was $310 a month and rent in the same house would have been $800 to $1,000. So it was really made a lot of sense to kind of live in a less expensive house. And with that extra money, we're buying apartment houses. And today, Kim and I have 10,000 apartment houses. Right. So Limit Dave the Ramsey, cash flow going out, and you improved your cash flow yes. coming in. We expanded our means. Right. Expand your means, which you're not going to hear that from Dave. No. You're not going to hear that from Susie, because that's middle class and yeah. poor. So if you're middle class, you know, buy a little house, you know, pay it off, live debt free. So all of you who are middle class, it's live below your means. Live debt and free. live debt free. So it's just is cut up your credit cards. Get out of debt. See, that's very different, but that's great advice. What do you want to say about Dave's uh, Ramsey's advice on living debt free? It's good advice. He's right? got five basic principles that he teaches that I think are fantastic yeah. and keeps a lot of people on track and away from becoming a complete debt disaster. Right. He even has Susie has them cut it up. Dave has them freeze it in a block of ice, their credit card. Right. So if they ever need to get to it, they have to chop the ice up to get to the credit card. I mean, well, it's the same pro <laughs> it's the same problem as Susie's addressing. They can't control their spending. Exactly. And, the point here is this, if you can't do what Susie does and you can't do what Dave does, you shouldn't do what we do. Right. And that's the point here. If you can't do what Susie does and you can't do what Dave recommends, don't do what we do. You see, the point here is this, when you look at our stuff and you look on the walls over here, my partners are like Donald Trump. You know, I don't think Donald Trump cuts up his credit cards. No. Okay, so we're going to go today, this is the whole point, there's poor, middle class, and rich. The other people that are very, very good for middle class, you know, one is uh, Rick Edelman and David Bach. David right? Bach, yeah. Why, why is that for middle class? And that's that's still kind of latte factor. You know, don't spend more than you make. Don't buy a latte. You know, don't buy a latte. Cut that's, out these things that you're not ready to, or mature enough to spend on. But what do they put the money in? Unfortunately, mutual funds. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I mean? That's good advice. How much money does Rick Edelman have under management? I believe it's around eleven billion dollars. So he's a rich man. Very. He very. doesn't do what he does. He doesn't do what we recommend. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the point. It's great advice if you want to be middle class. I'm not saying David Bach or Rick Edelman are bad people. I'm just saying it's middle class advice, and they put you in mutual funds, and you go, "Oh, this is so great." Because I went to their seminars. I'd sit there and I listen to them, and just like. What you did when you read Middle Millionaire Next Door, when I sat there, and I, Dave Edelman's a great guy, I shook hands with him and all this, and what I said in my back of my mind is, I would never do that, because right. I don't have to do that. Because you're playing by the rules of the oh, rich, rich, not right. the rules of the middle class or the poor. And and see, what I, I'm when I was following that Millionaire Next Door, I was in financial services, right, and I'm peddling the products that we talked about, and I'm getting this award this Rookie of the Year award at MDRT, and I'm feeling great about it. Yeah. And then this person who's much, you know, 10 years ahead of me and makes a lot more money, comes up and says, that's great, I can't wait till you learn the rules of the rich, though. And I was like, well, wait, I just got yeah. this award. And she says, the rich live Don't by different rules yes. than the middle class, and she's the one that had me Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Thank you. And I what got a... Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read it, and I was like, Oh my God, I get it. This yeah. is totally different. It's very different. This is, this is completely different set of rules. Right. Completely different set of rules. Another great friend of mine, the guy's all, not the, you know, like, I'm more friends with Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is a great guy, but I don't think he follows his own rules. You know what I mean? He's got a pretty nice house. Yeah. No, but he also, <laughs> he was a real estate guy. Yeah. You know, he, he used it. You know, he knows, he knows the game of the rich. Yeah. But he, he caters to people who want to be middle class because it feels better to them. 
Look, let me tell you, it really feels good to be debt free, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not how I live. Okay, so that's going to be the difference. Poor, middle class, and rich. Again, the reason I love your book here, Killing Sacred Cows, what's killing them is up here. Mm -hmm. You see, they think they're doing the right thing. You know, I have a 401k and I'm investing for the long term, you know, and it's, you know, it's tax deferred, you know, it's a tax free account. Setting up college funding for college my kids funding, with yeah. 529s. And you're getting ripped off. Yeah, 529, I always say 529 is not mine. That's what they should be saying, because it's actually, once again, the government owns those plans.